From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Tuesday, May 21st. I'm Augusta McDonald. Our top story, Billings Public School teachers are about to get a significant pay raise. Let's take a look at the numbers. Starting in the fall, salaries jumped 13% for first year teachers and 6% for returning teachers. District leaders hope the move helps them compete for the best of the best. In terms of candidates, right now Montana ranks last in the nation for starting teacher pay. On average, first year educators here make less than $35,000 annually. The pay increases are part of a new two year contract between the teachers union and SD2. This should be the most attractive district. Um, first of all, our starting pay is good. At this point, very, very competitive, if not the best. Our average salary is um, very competitive, if not the best. The contract will add $11.8 million over two years. That money will come out of the district's general funds. We'll continue to track those developments, but good morning, Ed. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Happy Tuesday. We're looking at some showers in some parts of the region. That's right. We got some sunshine, though, that's working over in uh, Helena. I want to show you just a little picture around the state. So they've got the sun breaking through. It looks pretty comfortable, uh, but here's Missoula. Look how socked in it is. They've had areas of fog throughout the morning and inversion setting up there. So as we contrast that with our beautiful sunrise happening in Great Falls, 35 degrees for a chilly start. And let's take a look towards Billings, where right now temperatures uh, right around 40 degrees, but will warm up hitting the low 60s later in the day. We do have those showers to talk about. In fact, a good chance of rain by Thursday. Details on that just a few minutes from now. All right, Ed, thank you so much for tracking that. And uh, top story this morning, more than 100,000 Montana families have lost Medicaid coverage in the last year. Enrollment in the program grew to record highs during the pandemic. While the COVID emergency was in effect, the government didn't require people to confirm their eligibility. Once that expired, states began checking to see who still qualified. Across the country, almost 22 million people were kicked off their Medicaid plan, but many of those individuals technically still meet the requirements for coverage. This morning, Q2's Haley Monaco talks with a family now struggling to restore their insurance. Enrollment in Medicaid grew to record highs in Montana during the COVID-19 pandemic with 310,000 people having coverage. Now, 135,000 of those people were found to be ineligible for coverage. For families like Aaron Nathans, it feels like a never ending battle. I was kicked off Medicaid. I have applied, I have reapplied. To put it simply, legislation during the COVID-19 pandemic banned states from kicking people off Medicaid. But in April of last year, that ended and the process of redetermining who still qualified began in Montana. Aaron Nathan had Medicaid coverage for over a decade. He has bipolar disorder and admits he often struggles to work full time because of it. You just can't quite cut it. You can't quite make 40 hours a week. Um, you don't know when you're going to be out of work for weeks or months. And his 14 year old daughter was in the same boat. She had coverage, but in July of last year, that was no longer the case. It's very difficult to have your child uh, tell you that they need help and to be filled with anxiety about how you're going to get that help. Over 130,000 Montanans have lost coverage in the last year, which is about one in 10 of us. So we all know and love somebody who's seen a coverage transition. Olivia Riuta with Cover Montana sees families over and over again dealing with the same struggles as Nathan's. Cover Montana connects Montanans with health insurance coverage. Folks who lost coverage, right, the majority of those folks actually lost coverage for what we call procedural reasons. So for some reason, they didn't send something back in to the Office of Public Assistance, whether it was a redetermination packet, whether it was a verification. So if folks still think that they qualify for Medicaid, right, they should reapply. Something that Nathan has tried to do. He recently received a six month extension. He was told his daughter was being re-enrolled. I can't take their word for it, but they say she's approved. And in 24 to 48 hours, she, her insurance should clear my doctor's office. 48 hours later, I call my daughter's doctor's office. They run the insurance. It doesn't go through. Adding to the stress and medical bills accrued in the last 10 months. If it just keeps going like this, I don't know what to do. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Haley, thank you so much for that. Now to details on a shooting in South Billings. A 49-year-old man is in the hospital with a bullet wound. 
An 82 year old man is believed to have pulled the trigger. The shooting happened yesterday morning near the 100 block of South 38th Street. People that live in the area tell us the men are neighbors and have had altercations before. Still, others in the neighborhood never expected these routine disagreements to turn violent. It doesn't matter what your background is. People need to learn how to talk about things instead of killing each other over something so minuscule. It's scary. We have kids in the neighborhood. There's kids in almost half of these houses on this side of the street. The fact that we have a park over here, we can't be shooting people. Police tell us the 82 year old suspect is cooperating with investigators. At this time, no arrests have been made. We'll continue to track that. And in one of the more shocking murders in Billings in recent memory, uh, uh, sentencing has been uh, done. And now the woman who killed a man during a satanic ritual will spend the next 75 years at the Montana State Hospital. 34-year-old Nina Cochran was handed her sentence in court yesterday. In December of 2022, she stabbed 64-year-old Douglas Nielsen at a home in the south side of Billings. Upon arrest, Cochran told police she had, quote, been born to become Lucifer and rule over the earth. She'll serve a sentence receiving mental health treatment. A 16 year old Billings boy is now facing homicide charges as an adult for the stabbing death of 17 year old Brighton Olson. Prosecutors say Chiron Wolfblack stabbed Olson twice in the chest and once in the abdomen. It happened back in April on Monroe Street. Wolf Black is also accused of stabbing an 18 year old who was then hospitalized. Court documents state on the night of the attack, Wolf Black and a teen girl were driving in the area. The girl recognized the 18 year old victim as someone she wanted to confront about a prior interaction. Police say Wolf Black then attacked both victims. However, Olson was stabbed during a second confrontation. Now in national news this morning, the first defense witness in the Trump hush money trial returns to the stand in New York today. This coming one day after his former fixer Michael Cohen admitted under oath that he stole thousands of dollars from the Trump organization. CBS's Jared Hill tells us what Cohen's comments could mean for the rest of this trial. Today in court, former President Donald Trump's defense is back, trying to poke holes in Michael Cohen's testimony with a witness of their own, former Cohen advisor Robert Costello. This comes after a fiery Monday on the stand. At one point, Judge Juan Rashan ordered the jury out of the room and reprimanded Costello for talking over him, rolling his eyes and making comments under his breath. The person that the jury most identifies with is the judge. So it's not a good thing for the defense to put on a witness where it's apparent that the judge is not pleased with that witness. The prosecution rested yesterday. In his fourth day on the stand, their star witness, ex-Trump fixer Michael Cohen, admitted to stealing money from the Trump Organization. In 2017, the Trump Organization owed a technology company $50,000. Cohen said he paid them about 20000 in cash in a brown paper bag and kept the rest. You stole from the Trump Organization, right? Asked Trump attorney Todd Blanche. Yes, sir, Cohen said. Cohen defended his actions, saying he was angry his bonus had been cut and felt he was owed the money. Michael Cohen is such a proven liar that why would it surprise us that he's also a thief? This case should be terminated. Later, the defense moved to dismiss the charges which accused Trump of falsifying business records to hide so-called hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels over an alleged sexual encounter, all of which Trump denies. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. The defense's motion to dismiss the charges yesterday, but could in the future. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden is among Western leaders sharply criticizing the request for an arrest warrant for several Israeli leaders. An international criminal court prosecutor wants Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other members of leadership taken into custody. In a speech yesterday, President Biden said what's happening in Gaza is not genocide and the U.S. rejects that claim. Millions of Americans are preparing for vacations. The TSA predicts this will be the busiest summer travel season ever. Compared to last summer, flight prices are down this year, but hotel room rates are up. Rental car prices are also down between 5 and 10 percent compared to last summer. The air booking site Hopper finds 87 percent of its users plan to travel this summer. The majority have not booked their trips just yet. 75 percent estimate they'll spend the same or more compared to last year. And in some health news this morning, teenagers are experiencing higher rates of depression than ever before. But a simple smartphone app could help treat a common symptom. CBS's Dr. Malika Marshall explains. 
2020 was an especially tough year for 16-year-old Avery Whitehead. With pandemic stress plus his parents separating, he was losing interest in activities he used to love, including sports. I just kind of wanted to like, just sit and do nothing. 20% of teenagers have experienced clinical depression in the past year, twice as many girls as boys, and the problem has only gotten worse over the past 10 years. Christian Webb, a researcher at McLean Hospital and Harvard Medical School who studies teen depression, says a common symptom is rumination, having repetitive negative thoughts that focus on the past. I'd always like look back and just think like negatively about myself or about like actions or decisions I made. Finding a child therapist is near impossible for many parents. So Webb and his team have partnered with Headspace to see if the mindfulness app can help teens with rumination. In an NIH-funded trial, volunteers, including Avery, perform different mindfulness exercises daily for a month, including breathing. The reason to focus on your breathing is that the breath is in the present moment. It's in the here and now. It's not uh, tomorrow. It's not yesterday. And so it's a useful anchor. While the study is ongoing, Webb says there have been some initial findings. Girls and older adolescents are more likely to benefit in the short term from using these apps. And in the longer term, teens that are struggling with rumination, that is repetitive negative thoughts about the past, are more likely to benefit from the, the app. Avery says he's back to himself and back to playing sports and still uses some of the skills he learned from the study. If I would start to ruminate, I'd be able to stop myself and then just have a better day overall. And a better outlook on life. Dr. Malika Marshall, CBS News, Belmont, Massachusetts. That study is still recruiting teenage volunteers between the ages of 13 and 19. Back here in Billings, the project to remove lead from drinking water at Rose Park Elementary School will begin this summer. Testing in 2022 showed the pipes at nearly two dozen Billings Elementary schools had elevated levels of lead. This project will cost $84,000. It will be paid for with money from the Elementary General Fund. More than 100 schools across Montana are also dealing with higher than allowed levels of lead. We'll